So welcome to Koi Chronicles. And in this chronicle, we get to find out who's actually won the Japanese floating water basket. I'm back, been away sometime, life hits hard. I've been busy with other things. Still obviously 100% into the RV. I've been a bit of a naughty boy because I got a phone call the other week. Some, uh, some pond was closing down, so I went over to go and have a look. Literally got 10 days to get rid of his fish and get rid of the pond because the new buyers didn't want it. So I went over to have a look and literally got the biggest fish out of there, which is just down there. He's a Israeli Deutsch Sankey. So scaleless fish, really thick. Bodied fish, female. I'll just uh, pop some clips in and one out here in the bowl. Enjoyed that. So that was her all bowled up. Saw real sore pecs. The pond wasn't being looked after very well. Thought twice about you know putting something in here. Because it's either gonna be the best thing you've done or the worst thing you've done. However, I've done what I've done and to be fair, she's settled in really nicely. But for the first day or so it really it really did change the dynamics of the pond. Everybody has now shifted around and found their new territorial place, if you like. But she's a bit of a mountain. And it really happy the other. She's quite friendly as well. Along with taking the prized possession out of the pond, I took away the filtering system as well. So got a brand new easy pod there more or less brand new it's got the k1 marker in which is great i've got the air pump to it which is under there and they also got the 25 uv evolution aqua light as well which i'll show you in the uh, filter house it's literally been bubbling for about a week it's in there now with pp i'll show you some clips of me doing that
pair that was absolutely, it hadn't been cleaned for months, it was filthy, but pulled everything back, got it more or less brand new now, and like I say, it's got a K1 Micro in there, so all good really. I've been thinking about putting that into the grow on, but it's easier said than done. I either do it gravity, take it all to bits, put a bottom drain in it, do it all, you know, a gravity fed system, or I literally just keep it as a portable device, try and prop it up in some way, shape or form, higher than the pond, pump to it, and then just release the water back to the vat on gravity. So let me know what you guys think, whether I should put it in there, whether I shouldn't, anybody's got any more ideas, but either way, it's a lot of work. It's not a lot of work if I put it on the pump fad, but it's just going to change the cosmetics in there. You're now going to walk into the polytunnel and you're literally just going to see a great big massive easy pod. So it might ruin the look in there, but we'll see. But for now, that can sit there, that can bubble away, as it has been doing for the last week or so, because it was absolutely filthy. So we'll nip into the filter house. We'll go and grab some food and uh, water temperature is down to about 12 and a half so it's really cold but we'll see if we can entice the new Deutz Israeli koi up because it's, it's quite, quite friendly so let's take you into the filter house so Mrs Koi Chronicles has been busy doing some pictures I'm sure you agree they're really nice. Another one over there, which is my favourite. And it's the Tan Show. So leave her a comment in the comments section on how well she's done there on them two drawings. But I absolutely adore them. So they've really brought on my filter house with a bit of artwork. We purchased a dining room sideboard table and there was a load of polystyrene in the packaging. So I've decided just to do the one off of the filled house. And I've got some wood, got some marine ply, 5.5 mil, just to now put in on top of that, because every time I clean this out, using my brush, the handle, keep putting it through the polystyrene so I need to get some wood over the top of that but you do these things thinking you've got a bright idea just to recycle things insulate the filter house a little bit more it's all down here but then you uh, create yourself some work but never mind system's running well no leaks no problems anywhere sieve doing its job easy pod doing its job we've had a little update on the moving bed which I will show you now. So I've fitted in a breather pipe. So now, going from the easy pod to the vortex, the centre pipe there is just free flowing. It doesn't back up anymore. It used to just burp and kick up a little bit, but it, it seems well it doesn't anymore as I feel that this pipe now is now breathing and as it's taking the water back to the pond it's breathing and doing a better job of it plus the fact that I wanted when I treat whether it's clay or whether it's you know macalakite green or whether it's bicarb I can literally just put it and pour it straight down here and it goes straight back to the pond so I'll show you actually what I've done and how I've fitted all that on here because I've got a few videos on the moving bed. So we'll show you that now and then we'll whip over to the fractionator, have a little talk on that and then we'll grab some food and go back out to the new Deutsch cart and see how friendly she is. Alexa, turn pond system off. Okay. So 
I'll just drop the vortex a little bit so you can see what I've done. So there you have it. I've literally just put that on the end. I had to uh, hole saw a hole out the end of this filter cage. Just dropped on an easy connector. Cut down that easy connector as well. And then just put some metal gauze in it, which is there. Cut it nice and perfect, round shape. Just dropped it into there so it's all snug, can't move away or anything. So it's literally perfect, but it also doubles up as well as a bit of an overflow. So if anything goes wrong in here, then at least now the water can come up and drop down this overflow here as well. So all in all, you know, it's doing a couple of jobs for me. It's allowing me just to use my return to the pond to treat and put anything down there that I want to, any liquid form, any powder form, anything like that, and it mixes up all the way back to the pond. I'll put a clip up actually of how it how it does it or how it comes out into the pond. I'll do that now. So yeah, it works really well. It literally covers the pond with a treatment or whatever you're putting in there. Covers the pond and mixes really well all in the water and then gets back through into the pump obviously and starts going back through the filtering system. So I'm really, really happy with that. I'll turn the system back on because we're going to talk the fractionator now and how that has been and what it's been doing. Keep an eye out for the water quality as well when we go back to the pond, it's, it's really good at the moment. Alexa, turn pond system on. Okay. So that's the pond system back on. We'll let the fractionator get water level again. And start doing the air, we'll keep our eye on it. So it's coming up now. Here it comes. But it's been playing ball, it's been working really well. I'm changing at least two and a half litres a day of real mucky, dirty, organic waste, which is great. There's the airline down there that's into the fractionator. So it's working really well. I'm really happy with it. Like I say, just keep your eye on the water quality when we go back outside, when we have a look at the fish or the new Deutsch fish. So we'll grab some food. Regarding the fractionator, I've already built it. I haven't done a how-to video anybody's interested you can drop into the Facebook group or drop me a message or drop me a whatsapp and if you you know if you really want one I'm sure I'm sure there's something we can do but believe it or not it's pretty a lot of these these parts come from all over the world so it's quite expensive to get everything together and then obviously you know to fit it 
you need to attach it onto something so you can see there that I've used a three inch elbow straight off the vortex so you could fit like a, a big three inch tank connector drop an elbow on it get the fractionator in try and work out on your air stones and you power of your air pump to try and get that level and to give yourself put the air pipe obviously on a on a controlled valve so then you know you can turn it up or down and just uh, release a lot of water or just slow trickle kind of foamy water but now I've turned that off it's uh, foaming up much but you can see it all around that end I'm sure so yeah you just have to have to probably measure it because it'll have to be a tad longer but that's not you know water levels normally lower than that it probably sits down behind the uh, glass dome but because you're putting air into it then obviously it makes that water level higher so you'd have to be conscious of that, just make it a tad bigger and then uh, cut it down, offer it in, run it, see how it works, cut it down and then get it to the, the right position. But you've literally got one shot with that, so you know, if anybody wants one or needed one, so you'd have to fit it with a tank connector, with an elbow, could build you one, give me a measurement, I'll make it a tad longer and then uh, once you get it, you can cut it down and uh, fit it to your system so we'll just grab some food now and see if we can get the new coil she normally plays ball but we'll see so the water's really really clear I haven't had much sun but it looks like we're going to get a bit today the temperature is only 12.5 remember but she'll be she'll be up in a minute she's a real friendly monster of a fish turned her head away on that go she'll come back in for another go I'm sure just have to uh, give her a bit of time but as I say the water is really cold she had some real sore pecs you've probably seen that in the clip that I put in but they've, uh, they've cleared up now so the pectoral fins are protruding at the back of you know this should be longer at the front so I might I'll obviously let her get settled in but I might trim back those pecs and try and get them to a just look cosmetically better any comments regarding that let me know I don't think it will uh, do a much harm but you know, I don't want to hurt her as well, but it'll bring her uh, cosmetic backs or slimline her, her pecs just so they look better and not half eaten from the front, but we'll see. Come on. She's coming now. So thanks for sticking with the channel as well and watching these videos. Hope you all enjoyed them. There's plenty of ideas on this channel. And there's a bit of uh, quite a lot of DIY stuff as well. Just making stuff, obviously. All the all the guttering that goes around the side. These covers that I've built. It's all just ideas for you guys, just to take on board, bring into your own skill sets and uh, you know have a go yourself
taken her a while, probably the uh, GoPro. She's a bit camera shy, like a dad. It would have been nice if she come straight up. But we'll just drop food in now. So probably on water temperature. It's really cold at the moment. But now we've moved away clearly. Come up. It really is greedy. It really is greedy. Speaking of food, Chip, if you're listening, I still haven't received the Takazumi mix from Kitsu Koi. I gave Chris a ring. Gave him a ring the other day confirm they're about to go out and get some more food because we're looking here we've run out i really don't want to open that however you know it'd be good to uh, receive that food so i can just keep that in storage and try and use that next year and just use up of the uh, takazuma that i've won from chips channel so that's koi rasta so i'm sure you all know it but if you haven't Check out Koi or Rasta Koi on the YouTube channels and go and give them a subscription and some thumbs up on some videos. So I think it's time to drop over now to the polytunnel and go and check up on those guys. Revive the Tancho, treated her quite a few times. All the scales now are pinned back to the body, looking loads better, thank goodness. So she, or he now, is on the mend. So I'm quite thankful of that. A few scales missing, but I'm hoping that, you know, because it's only a young fish, it'll uh, come back 100% do a lot better. Let's tap to the oak. food trick. Got some food in there. I'll probably get one to come up and have a bite to eat. I need to glue bowl these up one day so we can have a look at the fry from last year. If you could remember as well. But I had a spawning, an unplanned spawning in the main pond. Had a load of eggs that was unfertile and just went fusty and fungusy and got ruined. But I managed to split off those eggs, do two different bowls. One with uh, dechlorinated water and one with pond water. I can't remember which way around it went, but one of the bowls worked out just slightly better than the others. And I managed to save six little fry. So I'll pick those up, put them in the fish tank inside. So based on my loss rate last year, which was just millions to one, I had six in the fry tank indoors. And I've got two left and I'm you know pretty certain that they're over the hill now. I haven't I haven't spent that much time on the water parameters or 
you know, how I'm going to do things or whether I'll put a net in here and things like that. I've just literally put them in a the tank, put a bit of water in that tank, and then I haven't changed no water, so I've done no water changes. All I've done is added water in gaps. I'll put a put a trick on. So yeah, generation two, got two fry in there, there's one, and there's the other. So one's got real big scales on it, it's looking quite pretty, the other one's just uh, pretty much plain and boring. However, as I said in the polytunnel, I've not, I've not really cared for these much, I just filled it with water originally about 20 litres of water to there and then the following week topped it up again a little bit higher and then the following week after that topped it up again a little bit higher and then now I'm just going to top up again not done any water changes or anything this water has been sat there for 24 hours dechlorinating and it was through a dechlorinator getting it all to room temperature I'm just going to put this in so yeah, as much as looking after the fish in the big pond and looking after the fish in the polytunnel, there's now these to look after. But as I said, not really given much time, but not panicked, you know, not made it an issue, just relaxed about the whole situation. I think that's key as well, just relaxing around fry, just doing what you can, just not going absolutely crazy with it, but they are difficult. I mean, I've got two in here, so my success rate from six, having six, and just having these two, I'm more than happy. I think we're over the hill. I will be building the filter for this tank, maybe in the next video. We'll put it all together. We'll get some mature media out of the polytunnel and the backy tower, get it all in. We might put a little bit of K1 in there as well and start getting it running in this tank, but for now, they're doing all right, just little bits of food. I know there's a lot of debris in there, but not much you can do about that, but they seem to be okay. So, fingers crossed, generation two, well happy really, to be fair. There's nothing like bringing your own fry up. I mean, you know, you can buy fry, brilliant, but there's nothing, absolutely nothing like bringing your own fry up, it's absolutely brilliant and really exciting so that's that shut the lid let's get back to the polytunnel now literally just added water they've been in there now for at least a couple of months and i've got two left one's looking quite an interesting fish and the other one just looks like a, a normal say like the, the ones you can't see here which are the uh, brown magoi fish so, really pleased that I've got fry this year, only two, but as I say, compared to my success rate last year, started with six and I've still got two left. I started with like 10 million last year and I only had 17 left, so based on that, it's a bit of a result. But everyone's doing really well at the end, I think I'll probably do a video and get these out one day just individually let you see these but the uh, the ones that look like chagoys they're real nice fish they're getting big now and there's a nice like a blue colored one in here with a, a red banner straight across his head which is also nice so that's the update I'm sorry I haven't been around like I said in the video 
thanks for bearing with me. We need to find out who's won the Japanese floating water basket, which is literally just outside here. So we'll cut into that. Good luck, everybody. Thanks for everybody getting involved and leaving the comments and playing on the competition. I wanted to reveal the winner a bit sooner. However, just been busy, super, super busy. So we'll cut into that and then I'll catch you back over at the main pond. So this is the moment everybody's been waiting for. It's the draw to see who's won the Japanese floating water basket. What a peach of a prize on the Koi Chronicles channel. We're gonna put the URL into the comment picker for the video. We've filtered the duplicate users because some people answered more than once. We're gonna filter the comments based on the specific text because the answer was to the question. I do a lot of other social media platforms. What is my handle to those platforms? The answer was at Koi Chronicles. We're going to get the comments we've got 83 potential winners so fingers crossed for you everybody good luck and here goes and let's have a drum roll so the winner is decoy so well done mate my emails on the info on this channel contact me and we'll get this across to you well done and thanks everybody else for taking part in this competition. So there you have it, Decoy. He is the winner. Fair play. And I know he does some YouTube channels or videos. He keeps Koi and to be fair, you know, Hunter gone to a better guy really. I know he don't like to uh, mess around with his fish too much. So this thing will real, really help him out. And he can just drop it into his pond now and just uh, net a fish and just drop it in. So decoy, as the uh, little snippet here suggests, you are the winner. Contact me. Emails casey at koichronicles.co.uk. Drop me an email, mate. And then we'll get this across to you in some way, shape or form. Whether you want to meet up, whether you want me to put it in the post, whatever you want me to do, sir. Just contact me and we'll do all we can for you. Thanks everybody else again for entering. There is another chance to win one of these cups on another video, but I'll probably save that one for the next video. That was the fish name game video that I need to catch up in or on as well. So thanks for watching. We're getting to the end now of the video. Thanks for your continued support on the channel. If you've liked this video, then obviously please like it. I'm sure Decoy Dave will be giving me a like on this one. I'm sure he's buzzing at the moment. Comments again. I've got this easy pod. Let me know if I should put it in the grow on or whether I'll put it on gravity or whether I'll put it on pump fed just leave it kind of you know just as a detachable device because i may may get a bigger polytunnel down there or at least take that vat out and just get a bigger vat maybe next year or something like that but let me know in regards to the comment section about what to do with the easy pod also give mrs koi chronicles a shout of the artwork that she's done investing your time thanks for watching take care stay safe and bye for now thanks for watching koi chronicles and if you've got some more time now pick another video there's two there to choose from and make sure you subscribe into the channel